Hello and welcome to today's Student Affairs Shares. My name is Tamara Durham. I serve as Vice Provost for Student Affairs here at the University of Kansas. And I'm so excited to have today's guest. Um, I have uh, Dr. Doug Gerard, who is of course our Chancellor. And I have Dr. Barbara Bickelmeyer, who is our Provost and, ex and Executive Vice Chancellor here today. We are excited because it's August and we all know what that means. We are, we are all busy preparing for um, the arrival of our new students. And this year, it's a unique arrival because for some, it's our second year students, but it'll be the first time uh, on our campus. So we thought it would be great to hear from uh, our chancellor and our provost. It'd be great for our parents to, to hear from both of you. So thank you for joining joining me today. These questions are going to be so hard. You're going to be stumped. So are, are there uh, prizes involved, Tamara? <laughs> we can arrange it. We can okay. arrange it. <laughs> so I let me start with uh, what I think is easy. What, what advice would you give to our parents as they're bringing their students um, to campus for the first time? And we'll start with you, Chancellor. Uh, I, I would advise our parents to take that opportunity to really tour the campus and the campus spaces and get to know uh, with their student the university much more broadly. There's, this campus has so much to offer and, uh, and, and so many activities to offer that I think getting a really solid orientation right up front would be fun for everybody. Provost? Well, gosh, that's a great question, and there's lots of ways to go with that. Um, I, of course, echo the chancellor. Um, understanding the environment that, that your student's in, I think, will make you feel, feel a little more relieved about leaving your student. Um, but I'm also mindful, for any parent, when you are bringing your student to campus for the first time and you're letting go and they're starting to become independent, autonomous adults, I'm always reminded of some, some great orientation device advice I heard um, many years ago in, in another institution, and it was um, to, to help parents with language for letting their student go, which is, um, as you call and please call them regularly because they will miss you more than they will ever let you know. Uh, <laughs> or maybe you're lucky and they will let you know that they miss you, um, but, but letting them work through their own experience here and, and memorize the questions uh, uh, how are things going for you? What did you do about that? And how's that working for you? Um, and three <laughs> key questions that every parent should have uh, in their pocket for working with freshman students. Those are great. I'm writing those down for my high schooler. <laughs> <laughs> Provost, why don't you tell us what you're most looking forward to this as well, we start the academic year? You know, I, I should say, speaking of, you know, being parents and sending your children here, I'm a four-time alum of this institution. I couldn't get enough of it, so I just went all the way through, uh, and I, every, every time we get to fall, I think about my own um, experience as a student here, and what I look forward to, because I just started back as provost a year ago, is the community being together in a physical space. We did an exceptional job last year, adjusting as every institution needed to do. And we, um, I think, had a her Herculean effort by our faculty and our staff to be where our students needed to be, to be. But there's nothing like the joy and the thrill of students being together, of really getting to meet each other. I talk about the three-dimensional experience since you know, we've been in the one-dimensional Zoom experience for so long. So yeah. truly creating um, what we are and what is in our in our vision to be an exceptional learning community is what's most exciting to me to see the joy on people's faces to see the interactions um, to watch students make new friends and to start to discover I just that's what lifts me and inspires me is um, I do the work I do. Before I go to the chancellor provost you mentioned being a four time alum what was your favorite study spot on campus. <laughs> I, I really did actually love the library. Um, it, there's just some beautiful views of uh, the Kansas River Valley, the Wakarusa River Valley from either side, if you get the right seat. Um, I will say when I was in certain mood, Wesco actually was kind of a fun place to study, which nobody would say. So there's something wrong with me. <laughs> <laughs> Answer, what are you most looking forward to? 
Uh, well, before we go to that, I would I would say my, my son would say that Anschutz was the best place to study. Uh, and he also worked in the coffee shop there when he was a student. And my daughter, who just finished her first year at KU Law, would say Watson is the best place to study. So Watson Library. So, so I think it does depend on the student and, and what they're doing. I, I'm just looking forward to the energy of getting everybody back. Uh, and it's already started. And of course, we've had tours on campus all summer and we're really starting to repopulate the campus. But as the provost said, it was we did what we needed to do last year. We got through it. Um, but boy, did we miss the students and, and the energy that they bring. And and by, uh, you know, as as a result of that, also the the lack of the ability to get together for our 600 student organizations in person. They got together, but but to do so in person and to meet new friends and to participate in athletics events and in intramural sports and the list goes on and on and on. But but uh, just ramping that all back up again, which is already starting, which is so exciting. Great. So the chancellor mentioned a lot of um, out of classroom experiences for our students. Provost, you wanna talk about what we can expect what parents can expect and what they can support their students as they are returning and we are offering in-person um, instruction. I'd be happy to. And, and I also think, Tamara, of course, um, you bring a lot to the table in terms of talking about the co-curricular experience as well. Um, I do want to start by primarily talking about the classroom experience because, of course, um, that's a big part of why you and your students have chosen KU. Um, and, and we recognize, and if we didn't recognize before, we certainly recognized after the course of this fall that we are, um, and our value is in the, what we would call the in-person experience or the highly engaging experience. Actually, I think we might be better this fall for all the work that we did, um, because even for those faculty members who have lectured a lot in their lives, they're recognizing that, that what makes an educational experience truly quality and value is the engagement between the faculty member and the student and the students of each other with each other because that's what we lost last year and we know our students really crave the in-person residential experience we know um, that our most vulnerable students and our first generation students um, are are ones who particularly need to learn how to navigate through that experience um, so we've been doing a lot of work over the course of the summer to make sure that we get everybody back in the classroom and, and doing what they can do and, and providing the safest environment we can. And so we will have 85% of our courses in person this, this semester. And, and just so you know, that 85% is just about where we were prior to the pandemic. Um, we do have courses that are online because there is value in online as a format. I've said long for many years, and this is my academic expertise, um, there's a lot of things that are great about online if we know how to use that, that technology and that strategy. So um, where we can make lectures um, um, uh, more meaningful, we'll be doing that this, this uh, fall as we bring students in. And again, we'll be having much more engagement. Um, we will be making sure that students um, are getting the course formats that they signed up for. We'll be advising students um, who who may be in transit or are you know needing to to get you know just a little bit of uh, personalization there, um, we'll be doing that. But we're really outcomes focused and engagement focused in in our classroom, and we're more clear about that than we ever have been before. For the co-curriculars, as the chancellor already mentioned, 600 clubs and activities, um, but a lot of it is just the life the life cycle. The reason I loved Watson. Um, as a library, the reason why you know others love it is because you have serendipitous connections. You meet people. You go hang out in the union, and somebody's you know um, just there, and you start up a conversation. And so there's so much that's informal and impromptu, and certainly what happens in the residence halls. Um, that's that's true. So, um, but we also have all the advising support, and we have all the writing center support, and so many other kind of supports that will be available to students. So you've both talked about involvement. What were you involved in when you were a student? We'll start with we, we'll start with you, Provost. No, no, let's start with the chancellor. I've been the conversation. I'm gonna think about exactly how I wanna answer that one. Well, let's see, I was involved in uh, community engagement. So I helped run the volunteer office to, to assign students to volunteer activities across the community. And, 
and uh, I was involved in intramural sports and soccer. Uh, um, learned very quickly how out of shape I was when I got on the intramural soccer team, and it was very good for me, uh, um, and I and, uh, really enjoyed it. And then a number of clubs, pre-med club and a few others. Yeah, I was not involved in the pre-med club, I can assure you that. <laughs> um, for, for me, I was involved in um, by a faith-based community, uh, actually a couple of faith-based communities when I was here. One retired, um, tied to the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, one with St. Lawrence Catholic Center. I was an RA at Naismith uh, for a year. That was a truly uh, exceptional learning experience for me. Um, and I was involved in inter intramural sports. And then I was involved in a fair amount related to my academic areas, which were journalism and English. So um, some of the, the journalism groups, photography, and some other things like that. So it sounds like you were both pretty involved which didn't leave a lot of time for going home. But for our parents, how often did you go home? No, honestly, About. Honestly, I went home every weekend for Sunday night dinner. I, live, I came from Kansas City, so I, I can't say I didn't go home because um, I wanted one, one, uh, one of my mom's meals a week. So I, I will admit that I did that. I lived out of state and I went home for holidays. <laughs> that is perfect. We have, we have the perfect balance of both worlds here represented. Yeah. Great. So um, Provost, you mentioned meals. I don't know if you pay attention, but here the hot meal item is the crunchy cheddar chicken wrap. Uh, each year we participate in March Madness and make it to the finals. When you were students, what was the meal du jour? I was pretty partial to the cream cheese bagels at midnight <laughs> as my study break. <laughs> Honestly, that's a really excellent point. Now that you bring that up, I really do want to see Joe's Bakery come back because there's nothing better than a hot donut, you know, around midnight or <laughs> so. I can't, I can't remember, you know, my meal du jour that was actually a healthy meal. <laughs> Although Joe's Donuts had a really excellent egg salad sandwich for midday too, I just want to say. There you go. But that was not the campus food. So Chancellor, you have an interest that has attracted the attention of some of our students. Hopefully you know what I'm talking about. You I want do. to talk about your involvement? You know, I, I, uh, it was serendipitous. I, I actually have a, an antique sports car that one evening during the uh, first week of classes, I was driving up Jayhawk Boulevard and it broke down. And uh, a fine group of, of young people were uh, kind enough to push me all the way back to my house. And out of that conversation started the KU Audit Car Club. Uh, which I'm delighted to serve as, as the faculty advisor for. And I think it's grown to 60 to 80 students at this point in time in just a couple of years. So it's really a, a, just a broad group of people who have an interest in cars and some have cars and some don't. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but they do a lot of really fun activities through the course of the year. Great example of how we're all involved, all supporting our students. Hands on. Hands, Hands on. on. You That's can right. learn from anything. We'll just say that. You can <laughs> Those are the really fun things we get to do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, these are these are these last few questions are preference questions. What do you both what's your favorite building on question or on campus? Oh. There's wow. so many. Uh, uh, it might be Danforth Chapel. Can I have a couple? <laughs> rule breaker Danforth Chapel and I do I do Fraser just for the Fraser flags um golly that's just it's another place a lot of the buildings are about the view out of the building honestly I, I would have to say Spooner Hall or what we call the commons which is where we have a lot of common activities there but I believe it is the oldest academic building that we still have on campus and uh, as much trouble as it is to try and keep it up, it's really a pretty special place. Yeah. Well, okay. and it also has maybe one of the best, um, I don't know what you call the, the engraving in the stone, which is whosoever findeth wisdom findeth life. That's a pretty good one. Yeah. We approve. <laughs> <laughs> okay, think about the boulevard. The Chi Omega Fountain, 
or the fountain closest to the union across from the Office of Multicultural Affairs? Kyle Omega. Okay. Same? Okay. Pretty classic view from there, too. Yeah. Yeah. Can I give you one good story? About sure. Omega? Sure. So I had a sister two years older than me who went to another university uh, another hour or so west of here that shall remain nameless that had purple. And we didn't get along so well as, as uh, high schoolers. And she came to visit. And the first time she came to visit, I was so excited. I wanted to show her around. And she let me drive her car. And I, and I tried to drive through the toll booth. And they wouldn't let me drive through. So I had to back up. And they had um, construction, or they had a concrete barricades there at that point in time. And I hit the barricade and wrecked her car. So it kept us another year in, in sort of not not so friendly mode, but she did pay for it herself without telling our parents that I wrecked their car. So I gave her two points for that. Well, thank you for not hitting the Kyle Omega fountain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little trivia. <laughs> so Provost, you just mentioned family. I know you have family members attending in the fall. What's the total count up to now? Well, it was four. I did have a nephew, a great nephew. I'm of the age where all of these are great nephews and nieces um, who received a, a late entry baseball scholarship. So he, he pulled out. Um, only one of them, I believe, has the same last name as me. So I have a few secret shoppers, but one's <laughs> in engineering, one's in business, one's undecided, and one's in education. Good deal. We'll take care of them. <laughs> um, okay, favorite KU color, crimson or blue? Crimson. Crimson. <laughs> I'm crimson too. All right. Interesting. Okay. Um, the, the last question, I'm going to ask you to come clean. Did you walk through, Provost, did you walk through the Camp in Newly before you graduated the first time? No, I did not. I didn't. Okay. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Bad things happen if you do that. So that's yeah. right. I hear. So. Any final thoughts you want to share with our parents and families? I'd just say we are really looking forward to the start of the semester and to having your student join us. Um, I believe. Uh, I can speak for the chancellor and for everybody who's a dean, a vice provost, um, and beyond. We we take seriously our responsibility to engage, and we know what's the unique gift of being in the community of Jayhawks. And so um, we're excited to to have your students here, and we hope you feel welcome here as well, because now you're part of the Jayhawk community. Absolutely. Very excited to have you all come uh, to visit and to drop your student, but really to help your student uh, uh, launch their educational careers, but really their lifelong careers. And, and we will do our best also to connect them to the 350,000 KU alumni that we have out there. The Jayhawk Nation is very, very big. It's very strong and it's very tight. Um, and, and, that, and you will see when you come that the new Welcome Center is being built by our alumni. And that will be a place that your students will have an opportunity to, to meet the alumni and, and, and come back to once they leave. But uh, that bond is, is really quite, quite having been at multiple universities as the provost have, it's quite unique. And, and there's a reason for that. And that is really that engaging experience that, that they have the opportunity to experience uh, while they're here as students. So we can't, can't uh, wait to help them kick off that journey. Great. Thank you both very much for spending time with us today. And as both the chancellor and the provost said, we can't well wait to welcome students to the nest. In the meantime, rock chalk. Rock chalk. Rock chalk.